When it comes to losing weight, there's only one way to do it. You have to be in a calorie deficit. Now, getting into a calorie deficit can be done one of two ways. You either consume less calories, eat less, or you burn more calories, move more. Which naturally begs the question, which one of those should I be prioritizing? What is the order that I should be doing it in? And when should I stop cutting calories and start burning more calories? So I'm gonna answer all of those questions for you in this video, but before I get into the content, I want you to know who I am and why you can trust me. My name is Joe Johan. I'm the co-owner of defaultkings.com. We're an online fitness coaching company that works specifically with Christian entrepreneurs. And since 2019, we've helped over 600 men lose anywhere from 10 to 188 pounds and actually build the consistency to keep it off long term. So when it comes to this weight loss, muscle building, fat loss stuff, I tend to have a general idea of what I'm talking about. Okay. So now that you know you can trust me and I'm not just some guy on the internet talking about something I learned last week, <laughs> let's get into the content. So the short and quick answer that I'll give you here is the fittest people I know and the people that have seen the most success going through a weight loss transformation inside of my coaching program are the people that do both. They consume less calories and they burn more calories. So that's the short answer, both. Now, to get into the technicalities of this, right? I want to break down, really in my mind, what I think the proper order of operations is. I think first things first, you need to cut your calorie intake. It's generally the easiest thing to do. And when I say easiest thing to do, I should probably say simplest thing to do. It's very straightforward. I'm not gonna say it's easy. For some people it's harder than others, but it's very straightforward, it's simple. It's you learning to say no more and make some substitutions on some food choices. Right? And the reason I think that this is number one and why I think this is very simple and I still do think it's easier, simple and easy, is because if you look at what it requires to burn, say 500 calories, from an effort and a time perspective, it's significantly more than just saying, no, I don't want that 500 calories of cake. One is a split second. It takes you literally one second to say no and move on. The other one, it takes you a lot of effort and usually about 60 minutes of something, right? In other cases, if you go higher intensity, maybe you can get away within 30 minutes. But would you rather do 30 to 60 minutes of something intense, break a sweat, have to go home, shower, clean yourself back up, and you have to drive back and forth or commute back and forth, whatever it is, you've now invested what? An hour and a half or two hours into 500 calories when you could have just said no and it took you one second. So that's why I say first things first, cut the calorie intake. Now, there's a limit on that. And I'm gonna tell you a story that has led me to believe that there's a limit on that. And then also I'm gonna back it with some experience that I found out uh, when I was doing in-person training. So the story is that my father, who was actually a physical therapist, has a master's degree in exercise science, uh, which is ironic because he did struggle with his weight for years. And now he's in the best shape of his life. He's conquered it, he's beat that demon. I'm super proud of him. But from the time you know I was 10 till I was about 18, 19 years old, I mean, he was 60, 70 pounds overweight. And one of the solutions that he tried during that time period was a extreme keto deficit weight loss clinic. It was purely ketogenic and it was only around 800 calories a day. And I remember at that time in my life, I had been lifting weights for about like two years. So I was kind of deep into all of the training side of things. I was starting to learn a bit more about nutrition. So I knew intuitively that that seemed wrong. And my hunch was correct. And here's why I was correct. Because in that three to six month period where he did that, he did end up losing around 60 to 70 pounds. Right? But he was absolutely miserable. He was fatigued. He was terrible to be around. He was angry. Everything that comes with being in an extreme deficit from an emotional perspective was just in full force. And if you've ever done some sort of hyper restrictive solution, you know that this is the case. When you go into an extreme measure with your diet in an extreme deficit, it has a, a ton of negative side effects. Now, you can still easily make the argument, and I agree with this argument and support it, that all the negative implications of a calorie deficit or an extreme calorie deficit are far less than the negative implications of staying overweight. Deficit, it sucks. Staying overweight, it sucks. But one of them can kill you, right? And that's staying overweight, right? So I'm still team go with deficit even though there's negative implications. 
but it doesn't have to be that miserable as it was for him and maybe it's been for you when you've tried extreme solutions like keto or fasting or weight loss clinics or severe deficits in the past, right? It doesn't have to be that way. And that's part one of why I built this belief. Part two of why I built this belief is when I was in-person training a few years back and I started to apply this concept of calorie deficits to real humans, what I found is there tends to be a, a threshold where crossing it is like stepping into a minefield where this person is more than likely going to lose a significant amount of weight and then gain it back, which I forgot to mention, my dad lost that weight and then gained it all back at the end of it, right? Because he just went back to doing what he was doing beforehand, just increased his calories and went back. Nothing changed. Same thing was happening to the people that I was working with if we went too deep into a deficit. So there seems to be this threshold, this like invisible barrier that varies person to person, but in general, across the board, I would say for men, that threshold is like 1,500 to 1,600 calories is where I don't really like to take people below that, right? I don't, right? Because that's typically when they get into this point in time where emotionally they're a wreck, their training goes to crap, their energy levels are torched, right? And it ends up just not being worth it, right? Because they burn out, they fall off the wagon, they stop doing, they don't stick to the program, they fall off the wagon. Right? So that happens around 15, 1,600 calories in my experience. So again, my, my first step here is cut your calorie intake, go as deep as you want to go into it. The heavier you are, the less, uh, the less deep into a deficit you have to go. When what I mean by that is if you're 400 pounds, you don't need to go to 1500 calories. You're going to, you're going to get away with going to 2,500 or 3,500, you're 400 pounds. But if you're like 175 pounds and you're trying to lose 25 pounds, you probably got to go to 1500, right? So the lighter you are, the lower your calorie intake has to be, the heavier you are, the less it has to be because you just have more weight to lose and you've been in a severe excess for a significant amount of time. So somewhere around that 1500 to 1600 calorie range, once you've cut your calories as far into that as you want to go, I would stop personally. And then I would move my focus to increasing my calorie burn. Now I'm not saying you don't focus on your calorie burn at all when you're trimming your calorie intake. I just think once you've trimmed it all the way to 15 to 1600 ish at max, again, your number might be higher than that depending on how much you weigh. Once you've gotten to that, right, then you just focus more on how can I burn more calories? I'm not saying don't focus on it at all until you get there, but once you get there, it just becomes the new focus. You focus on cutting and once you've cut as much as you can, you focus on burning as much as you can. And what often this looks like, at least for our clientele, is more steps, so walking more, running more, more active hobbies. So if you're somebody that already does jujitsu, maybe you pick up pickleball too, right? You pick up another active hobby, right? Those are generally the two easy ways to do it. More steps, another active hobby. And you continue to just increase this burn, basically as far as you can take it. Right? And that's the order of operations that I would go. But again, in general, the point I made early on is you have to do both. And to sustain it long term, the people that sustain it the longest, the people that see the best results and the people that are just in general healthy as can be, they've mastered their calorie intake and they have many sources of burning calories on top of just their basic resistance training, which in my opinion is a fundamental need for every single human being. We should all be strength training, resistance training, but you stack extra calorie burning activities on top of that that's the order of operations that I'd go. Okay. So that, in my opinion, is how you attack this most effectively. All right. Now, in terms of, in terms of what this actually looks like from a sustainability perspective, right? You should do this until you get to your goal body weight. Once you get to your goal body weight, at that point, you are safe to increase your calorie intake and maybe slightly decrease your output because you are now aiming to maintain that weight, right? And what will happen is, is sometimes people will get stuck on their way down to their goal body weight, right? Maybe they'll hit like a plateau or they're trying to increase their calorie burn and decrease their intake, right? And they are like, hey, the scale is not moving the direction that I want it to move. And I'm here to tell you that the scale is never wrong, right? So if for some reason, on your way down to goal body weight and on your way down to getting to that point where you can go to maintenance and eat more food, move less again, and kind of balance it out, live a more balanced life, right? On your way down there, if you run into bumps along the road, I'm here to tell you that in most cases, it's a skill issue. 
Because if you think that you're only eating 1,500 or 1,600 calories and you think that you're burning an extra 1,000 active calories a day, but for some reason the number on the scale isn't going down, you are likely tracking your calorie intake incorrectly right? or you are way overestimating how many calories you're burning from those movement activities or active hobbies that you're doing. It's usually a skill issue, right? And if it is a skill issue, I have videos on my YouTube channel about how to track food with a scale. I have videos on my YouTube channel about how to burn more calories, right? There are resources out there if it's a skill issue, right? You can go ahead and fix that. Right? You just have to admit to yourself that basic thermogenesis is real. And if the number on the scale is not moving down, it's because you are doing something wrong and you are not in a deficit. You lost a deficit. Now, in rare cases, there are situations where it's actually a hormonal problem and there's some sort of thyroid dysfunction or something going on, uh, and you would be able to find that in blood work. But it's still such a rare case where that does occur that we can basically safely rule out that as a possibility as to why you're not losing weight. Right? Unless you've been previously diagnosed with something that you know is negatively impacting your thyroid or your hormonal response as a whole, 9.9 out of 10 times, you're just not in a deficit and it's a skill issue because you are miscalculating things from an intake or burn perspective, right? Now, that is the general premise of when should I cut calories? When should I burn more calories? How do I do it? What's the order of operations? Of course, this is a YouTube video or a podcast, wherever you're listening to this at. There is nuance here, a ton of it, which is why I have a coaching program. So if you're somebody that actually wants help with the nuance and wants hands-on assistance from myself and my team that's helped over 600 people do this, all you need to do is go to the link in the description, defaultkings.com, and you book a free fat loss assessment. You'll either talk to myself or the other founder, Gabe Plugez, or somebody else on our team about how we can help you lose anywhere from 10 to 50 pounds or more and actually build the consistency to keep it off long term. So if that sounds interesting to you, go book a free fat loss assessment. And other than that, that completes the video. If you found it helpful, like, comment, subscribe, send it to a friend, do all the YouTube stuff. I'll see you in the next one.